Hello everyone. So today we're going to be discussing about the weighted AMGM inequality and homogenization. And both are actually really interesting concepts. Um, the weighted AMGM inequality is obviously something that is being constantly used apart from the standard AMGM. It's a good thing to know. And uh, yes, of course, homogenization. It's homogenization is like a technique. A standard technique is not an inequality or anything, but it's just like a technique that is used to uh, really simplify down certain inequalities. So yeah, let's see how we can deal with this. This problem number two from the IMO in 2020, actually relative to the problem number two is actually not that hard, it's fairly doable and it was proposed by Belgium. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the weighted AMGM inequality. We'll first look at what AMGM is and then we'll talk about weighted AMGM is. After that, we have homogenization of inequality, which is just like a standard technique, you can say. And using that, we can, you know, simplify down certain inequalities. It's actually very, very helpful. And after that, we have some book sessions for senior math Olympiads and at the end, a similar charge. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so let's see what they've given us. They're telling us that real numbers a comma b comma c comma d are such that a is greater than equal to b greater than equal to c greater than equal to d greater than equal to zero. Okay, great. And a plus b plus c plus d is equal to one. So we need to prove that a plus two b plus three c plus four d times a is for a b is for b c is for c d is for d is actually less than one. There are a few ways to do this. Um, I'll just like maybe give a hint of uh, one technique. Just take log, right? When you take log, you will be left with a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d, right? Plus a log a plus b log b plus c log c plus d log d is less than log 1, which is 0. And this is actually provable by weighted Jensen's inequality, right? Weighted Jensen's inequality. And this actually holds true because of the fact that log is a concave function, right? And it's actually less than zero. This is possible by using weighted Jensen's inequality, but however, that's not, in my opinion, the best way to do is, right? The, probably the more elementary solution, better solution is by using something called the weighted AMG technique, right? So you can solve it using weighted Jensen's inequality as well. That's perfectly all right, but uh, that, that's very easy to do. More importantly, let's maybe look at the application of the weighted AMGM as that's asked more commonly. So now what is AMGM, right? It's the, the standard AMGM inequality. And I'm sure you've heard of this. Um, basically, A1 plus A2 all the way up to AN. If you take the sum and divide by N, that's greater than or equal to the nth root of a1, a2, all the way up to a and the product basically. Or in more mathematical terms, I can write this as sigma ai from i is equal to 1 to n divided by n is going to equal to the nth root of pi ai from i is equal to 1 to n. So it goes something like this. The standard AMG inequality and probably the most basic one of this is a plus b by 2 is going to equal to root ab. Right? This is the most basic case of that, the most elementary case of that. Well, that's great. That's obviously very true and that's can easily be verified. But then you have this weighted AMGM, right? The weighted AMGM inequality. So what does this weighted AMGM inequality say? Basically, it states that A1, B1 plus A2, B2 all the way sum up to A and B n. If you divide that by the sum of A's, A1, A2, A3 all the way up to A n, this will be greater than or equal to b1 raised to the power a1, b2 raised to the power a2, all the way up to bn raised to the power an, and this whole raised to the power 1 by a1 plus a2, all the way up to an. So basically, you have this thing on the left hand side, which is basically the sigma ai bi divided by sigma ai, and that is greater than or equal to the right hand side. Let me maybe write down the right hand side again b1, a1, b2, a2, all the way up to b, n a raised to the power n raised to the power 1 by a1 plus a2 all the way to an. This is essentially the statement of the weighted AMG inequality. 
and yeah maybe let's just see how we can apply this weighted amgm to our problem so what do we have we have a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d times a is for a b is for b c is for c d is for d is less than one so if i may try to apply weighted amgm over here what what's my objective see my objective is that i have like a polynomial over here but i have an exponential over here and in most cases when do, dealing with inequalities it's easier to deal with polynomial inequalities so i kind of need to get rid of these terms this these exponents and all maybe convert them into polynomial in some way one way to do that was to use logarithms and then use the weighted jensen inequality uh logarithm is obviously concave and the inequality holds but using this i need to use weighted amgm to somehow maybe reduce this exponential to a polynomial form okay great so 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 in this in this in this inequality in this amg weighted amg inequality if i set a1 is equal to a if i set uh, a2 is equal to b if i set a3 is equal to c and if i put a4 is equal to t and i put precisely the same for all b i so b1 is equal to a b2 is equal to b b3 is equal to c and b4 is equal to t let's see what i get i'll get a times a plus b times b plus c times c plus d times t divided by a plus b plus c plus d and this entire thing is going to be greater than or equal to a is per a b is per b c is per c and c is per d whole raised power 1 by a1 a plus b plus c plus d and in the question they've actually given us the value of a plus b plus c plus d which is 1 and that should be great because now we can just simplify this down so this effectively becomes a square plus b square plus c square plus d square is greater than or equal to a is power a b is power b c is power c d is power d so essentially the maximum value of this exponential terms that we had the maximum value is going to be a square plus b square plus c square plus d square okay that's great let's go on to our original inequality it was a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d times this entire thing right this entire exponential thing which you do not want which you kind of need to remove it and that was the intuition of using logs and then using gen sense but here it was we're using weighted amgm it suffices to actually prove that a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d times this quantity which is maximum of its quantity is this a square plus b square plus c square plus d square is less than one because effectively, if this inequality is holding, then this also has to hold, right? Because the maximum value of this exponential is going to be 1, right? Which just suffices to prove this lower inequality. So we've transformed, we've transformed a given inequality into two polynomial expressions. And that's typically easier to deal with, yeah? It's, we, are, we more like to deal with polynomial, and we, it's kind of easy to deal with, you know? You have so many um, inequality theorems and base cases that you have for polynomials. AMGM, weighted AMGM, right? Cauchy Schwartz, there are so many. Right? There are simply for polynomials. So it's easier to deal with them usually. Okay, great. Now that we've reached this stage, now let me move on to the concept of homogenization. So what is homogenization? Homogenization is like very broad concept in mathematics, but we're gonna be discussing it with respect to solving inequalities in Olympiads. So what does homogenization mean? Homogenization is basically to make the degree of the terms on both sides of the inequality the same. So we actually see the left hand side over here. What's the degree? You have a and you have a squared. So degree is 3. The degree of LHS is 3. If you see the right hand side, what's the degree? It is 0, right? You have a constant term. which You have essentially 1 times a is power 0. It's, its degree is 0. And to homogenize them, I need to make both the degrees same. Now, how do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple actually. In the question that they have given us a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 1. So essentially a plus b plus c plus d whole cube will be 1 cube, which is 1. Right? So I have transformed this 1 times a is power 0, which is degree 0, into degree 3. And I kind of replace that over here. And once I do that, I will get a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d times a square plus b square plus c square plus d square. And that is less than a plus b plus c plus d whole cube. So we need to prove this, okay? We have to prove this. This is what we have to prove now. Essentially, what I was doing till now is there was this original inequality that was given to us in the question. 
which contain an exponential term. I did not like that. We do not like dealing with exponentials in most cases. So we reduced it down to a polynomial expression. After that, we homogenized it. So now we need to prove this inequality. And if you if you somehow manage to prove it, that essentially means that our question is done. And this is actually very easy to prove. All you really need to do is just expand this, right? So for example, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d times a square plus b square plus c square plus d square. This opens as a square, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d plus b square, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d plus c squared, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d, all the same of course, plus d squared, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d. And how does a plus b plus c plus d whole cube open as? So it basically opens as a squared times a plus 3b plus 3c plus 3d, plus b squared, b, plus 3a plus 3c plus 3d, plus c squared, c plus 3a plus 3c plus 3d, plus d squared, d plus 3a plus, actually a b over here, 3a plus 3b plus 3c, right? a, b, c over here, a, b, d over here, a, c, d over here, and b, c, d over here, plus certain other quantities, plus 6abc, plus 6abd, plus 6acd, plus 6bcd. Effectively, what I'm trying to say is that now we do certain comparisons. You see, we need to prove, we need to prove this inequality. We just compare the individual terms, you see. So a squared, when I, when I just kind of like uh, opened this out and expanded this, the first time I got a squared of a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d, Keep in mind that they've given us in the problem that a comma b comma c comma d are real numbers with their sum equal to one and all of them are greater than zero, right? So it's obvious that a squared times a plus 3b plus 3c plus 3d is gonna be greater than this, right? Similarly, b plus 3a plus 3c plus 3d times b squared is gonna be greater than this. Okay, that's great. Similarly, c squared times c plus 3a plus 3b plus 3d is going to be greater than this third term. Right? Okay, that's great. And then this fourth term, d squared times d plus 3a plus 3b plus 3c is going to be greater than this. This essentially stems from the fact that a greater than equal to b greater than equal to c greater than equal to d greater than zero. Right? Because of this thing is happening, these four quantities, this number one, this number two, this number three, and this number four, is individually less than these four quantities over here that we've discussed. So basically what really happens is if I just ignore this, if I just ignore this, I will get that this, this entire, the sum of these four expressions is less than or equal to the sum of these four expressions. But now once I add these, now once I add these 6ABC plus 6ABD plus 6ACD plus 6BCD, when I add these four quantities, we get a strict inequality. Because when I add these four quantities, obviously one of them has to be non-zero, right? And even if I if, if it's like a minuscule amount, it's obviously going to be greater than this this entire expression. So basically, it's a method of grouping. And to kind of reiterate, what I've done is that a plus two b plus three c plus four d. This I multiplied out with a square plus b square plus c square plus d square, and I had to prove that this is less than a plus b plus c plus d whole cube. And I just compared the, the things via group, right? When I expanded this, I got a squared, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d. I got b squared, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d. I got c squared, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d. And I got d squared, a plus 2b plus 3c plus 4d and when I expanded this I got a squared a plus 3b plus 3c plus 3d I got b squared b plus 3a plus 3c plus 3d I got c squared c plus 3a plus 3b plus 3d and I got d squared d plus 3a plus 3b plus 3c and then I got certain other terms plus 6abc plus 6abd plus 6acd plus 6bcd. 
and effectively what i what i'm saying over here what i said earlier as well that this quantity is less than this quantity similarly this quantity is less than this quantity this quantity is less than this quantity and this quantity is less than or equal to this quantity so basically if i just compare these four terms i'll get a less than or equal to inequality and when i add up these four terms over here they are kind of extra so that's why the strict inequality holds so hence by just kind of like grouping the terms right kind of just comparing the terms group wise we just see that this inequality holds and we can just say that it's hence proved right this is a pretty interesting question all we really had to do was apply weighted emj inequality and then homogenize it so yeah pretty neat application and i hope you learned something from it Okay, so moving ahead, we have certain book sessions for senior math Olympians. I am a compendium, polynomials by Barbeau, elementary number theory by Sierpinski, graph theory by Harari, combinatorics by Brualdi, secrets and inequalities, and obviously functional equations and how to solve them by Christopher D. Small. Okay, so at the end of a similar but challenging problem, this also involves AMGM inequality, weighted AMGM, and uh, the goal is to let A, B, and C be real numbers, and then you have to need to prove this inequality over here. So yeah, maybe try using AMGM and uh, if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Sinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.